Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Preston, just sorting some cards. Getting ready for the auction. I had a couple people asking about certain teams. I was going to take a look. Need to get some of these sorted out. These are all a bunch of base cards. Blaze Alexander is going to be good, though. Hey, who's here? Hey, Trout the Beast. Big D, sorry guys, I, I ran into some trouble trying to get, I kept getting this message from YouTube, it said, you know, stream could not be created, um, but finally it went through after several attempts, so, yeah, it's just, uh, not a lot going on here, it's just a black tabletop, and then this up uh, here is a, is a box with a black shirt on it, <laughs> it's a production uh, costs around here are very low. So I know you stopped by. I told you I was going to show you some of the twins I'm going to have for auction. This is my pile of twins so far. Yeah, this is just a black shirt draped across a cardboard box. <laughs> Here, look, if I, if I go too far, there's... There's outside the box. That's my TV. <laughs> See, over there, that's uh, what I got over there. That's my little... Oh, my, my shoes are over there. So I got to keep it Got to keep it tight. Got to keep it perfect. Can't bump the camera. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag we grow together. And hashtag card crew. Absolutely. We are going. <laughs> All right, what do I got here? Uh, you told me about that Jose Barrios. I'm going to have some Barrios in there. Rosario, Mitch Garber. I think I over there I got some Minnesota Viking stuff too. I might actually have a couple of good ones. There's going to be some, I think, a lot of these newer cards on top. I got some old Bowman Chromes and these guys and the guys that never hit, but they're beautiful cards. Let's see. I got my. I gotta move my computer so I can see it better here. Keep up with the chat. Stick with me, guys. Oh shit. And back here, it's gonna be some uh, more. Of it. You remember when David Ortiz was with the Twins? I'm sure. Move this up a little. Well, we got the OPT, the Canadian cards, Jack Morris. There's a few, quite a bit, Jack Morris and Jim Tomey. I got some ton of Jim Tomey and the other teams, too. These old Procter & Gamble scorecards, I don't know how hard they are to find, but I haven't seen them in a lot of places. I have a bunch of those. A couple Kirby Puckets. Every Minnesota fan's going to love Kirby Puckett. Burt Bly Levin, Hall of Famer. The old 87 wood borders are beautiful. Glenn Perkin, Johan Santana. That's from maybe 2004 or something. 2006. Joe Maurer. The real nice Denard Span. Allen and Ginter card. That purple All Star Kirby. How about Morneau, Maurer, and Carlos Gomez? I love it. Upper Deck, man. It's a shame that Upper Deck don't make baseball cards. Allen and Ginter, Joe Maurer. What purple all-star? Oh, yeah, these. Yeah, that one's chewed up pretty bad. I probably I shouldn't even include that. That one's in good shape. Shit, lost it. There we go. So there are some twins. Let me, I think I got some. Uh, these, I, I was putting these in penny sleeves. Denny Jensen refractor. I think there's some twins in here. The 150 
anniversary cards. PSA zero. And then some of these chrome inserts. I know there's some more twins around here. Give me a few minutes, I'll get to them. It's a really nice Nolan Arenado finest card. There's a Trevor May Gary V card. Denny Jansen any good? No, he doesn't appear to be. Not yet anyway. How old is he? Born in 95. So he still has some time. I suppose. But yeah, I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd lay money on Denny Jansen's, Denny Jansen's career panning out. Mark to share a pure heat die cast. Hey, <laughs> look at the flames. That's a really sweet card. A good looking card. Shira. Tech Shira fan. These there's some other die casts. Edmonds and Carpenter. Adrian Gonzalez. Jeff Kent. Canerico Sabathia. These are good looking cards. Those were from the S uh, from Upper Deck, two thousand seven. I got a trout. I think I got a couple trouts around. Oops, just smack the camera. See, oh, mess myself up now. <laughs> uh, these red parallels are sweet. Let's see if I got any twins here. Trumbo, that guy. Here's a Kyle Gibson. That's a real pretty card. It's not numbered. More of those 150. These guys, I got to get in the penny sleeves. I, that's what I was finishing up. There's a Roland Acuna trophy card. Glaber Torres and Otani. Jeff McNeil rookie. Those are getting, I got to get those in penny sleeves. Yeah, let's see, put this there. Oh, what else? Oh, here, let me see. There's probably some twins in here. These are, that's a numbered card there, the West Helms. The numbered Jorge Posada. A numbered Schilling. There's another McNeil rookie. Kyle Tucker, finest rookie. That's a good looking card. These little tiny, um, weird sized cards I put in these to protect them. Is that a rookie? No. Who's the number? No, the Chris Davis. And I love these old Bowman cards, the old oversized. Keith Hernandez and Gary Sheffield. That's a that's a rookie card. Sammy Social rookie. I know I got some more twins. You want to see any Vikings cards? No penny sleeves? No, I got a pack of penny sleeves over there. I was just in the process of of uh, putting stuff in penny sleeves. I think I got a couple hundred left over there. I do need to go to the to the store. These are all numbered cards. Let's see if there's any twins here. Well, these are old. These are from like 2006, 2007. I think a lot of these through this part. They're all numbered. Will Myers. That might be a rookie card. Yeah, rookie of the year. Maybe a second year. No, that's a rookie. That should be a rookie card. Numbered Will Myers to 2014. Yeah, these are a lot of guys that didn't pan out. Numbered cards. There's a pretty card. There's a Ron Gardenhire. I don't know how many Ron Gardenhire numbered cards you'll find out there, Big D. Numbered to 2006. Shinzo. Yeah, that Shinzo is a sweet card. Where'd it go? We'll take a little bit of a closer look at it. Clear triple crown. 
prospects as a rookie card numbered to 2,999 from 2001. A good looking card. All right, let me see what else I can find. We looked at some twins and some of the penny sleeve stuff. Oops, some of the die cuts. Let's see what I got in the in the actual cases over here. Oh, my stuff's falling over. <laughs> There's a couple of Vlad rookies I'm going to put in there. Eric Chavez. Oh, we haven't got to those. We'll set those over. Mattingly. That Josh Hamilton rookie card's in perfect condition. It's an upper deck, too. Love upper deck stuff. Sammy Sosha rookie. Sheffield black and white. I got a ton of Manning Ramirez in these stacks over here. These are little tiny cards. Jim Rice, Jason Giambi, David Ortiz. Where were those from? Two, those are upper deck as well. 2007. 1985. Keith Hernandez in pretty good condition. The 80, is that the 83? Oh, my damn eyes aren't what they used to be. 1982, Keith Hernandez. Bobby Bonilla, rookie. It's not in perfect. Those three corners are fine. Everything is fine except that corner there. It's a little imperfection there. No twins in that stack yet. Let me see if I got any autographs or... Oh, I gotta have something in here. Hold on. This will be some of the better stuff from for the auction. A couple of Vlad Guerreros. It's not in great shape, but a couple junior rookies. Still getting paid. Yep, there's a few of them. Griffey still gets a paycheck from the Reds every year. Is that 82? A couple 1982 Mike Schmitz in really, really good condition. Bowman Ichiro. What's that? No. What year was that? Carlton 84. 85 Carlton. 85 Hojo rookie. Let's see. Here's a pile of rookies. Let's see what we get here. Let's see, Herbeck. Ken Herbeck. Ken Herbeck was a good ball player. Kurt Schilling, rookie. Sammy Sosha, rookie. Mark Grace, refractor. I don't collect Yadier Molina, so I'm going to get rid of that. That's a, that's a hat patch. That's the patch from his hat. 2019 Series 1 tops. The sweet freaking card. Hat patch. What do we got? Steven Matt. Oh, we got some autographs here. The Steven Matt's autograph. Steven Matt's refractor. Yeah, there, there you go, Joe. I will make sure uh, when I schedule the auction, come take a look at these. Really nice cards. Ryan Barucki autograph. Zach Godley, that, that legacy of baseball. He's got a real good looking autograph, too. Cedric Mullins autograph. Every collection's got to have one because, you know, there's only a billion of them out there. Some of the newer autographs. All these autographs will be from like the. Mid 2000s, Philip Humber. You got two of those. Two different years. That one's his rookie there. 
2006, 2007. Nope, both 2007s. That one just don't have the rookie stamp for some reason. Yeah, these will be a bunch of guys that never panned out, really. Eric Stoltz. Got a lot of these SPX cards. Tim Gretaville. Cesar Jimenez. Jeff Florentino. Scott Thorman. John Nelson, John Knott, is that Brian Burris? He was supposed to be really good, never worked out. Ross Ollendorf, that's a real pretty card, though. Old Bowman. What else is in this pile here? I'm getting a little better. Ben Sheets. Ben Sheets was going to be really, really good. There's a lot of buzz around him. Graham Koontz. Andre Ethier, numbered to 199. That's a good card. Yeah, Sheets, I mean, he had... You know, There's some things to be proud of in his career, but, I mean, they were billing him as, like, the next big thing. Joe Nathan. That's a good one. Joe Nathan, uh, patch card number to 175. Ricky Weeks, patch number to 99. Matt Kane, number to 99. No, Joe, Joe Nathan was uh, one of the best closers in the league for a while. Dude was really, really good. Adam Dunn, number the 175. I like the the blue color of the 175s. Dontrell Willis, number the 199. Scott Kazmer, 199. Alex Rios, 199. Yeah, SPX, good stuff. And a few more of these here. We got BJ Ryan. It was uh, Ricky, Ricky Nolasco, Pat Burrell. He had a few good years. Nick Swisher. That's a really pretty green. Let's see if it shows up. No, nah, it doesn't really show up. It's a real pretty athletic green, like a dark green. And I love these old framed cards. Casey Kochman and Eric Chavez. Framed relic from Allen and Ginter. Yeah, Dontrell Willis, man, he was dominant for a little, a short period of time. He ended up in a Reds minor league system. Actually, I think he pitched a few innings in the major scores, but he got a little older. He ended up with the uh, with the Reds. Let's see. Let's set these over here and see what else I can dig out. You you want to see some uh, a little bit of football? There any other? I got. If you look this way, I got all those stacks of cards over there. They're broken down by teams. So if there's a particular team you want to see, let me know. Let me stick. Oh, I gotta get those in penny sleeves. I keep forgetting. I ran out of penny sleeves a little while ago. And once I got some, I was way behind. So I've been penny sleeping the hell out of all kinds of stuff. Uh, let's see. Any teams you want to see? Marlins traded Willis along with fellow All Star Miguel Cabrera to the Tigers for Andrew Miller, Cameron Maiden, Rabello. Oh my God, what a horrible trade! Burke Baden Hop. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Mm. What a what a brutal trade. Uh see here's some of the some random stuff. Grant Hill patch card. Uh these hockey autographs are nobodies, but these hockey cards, these are all Hall of Famers. Sergei Makarov, rookie card, Hall of Famer. I don't know if there's any. Brett Hall, Patrick Roy, Sergey Fedorov, rookie. 
These are all in good shape, too. Pat LaFonte, Phil Esposito throwback card. Now, I don't have much hockey. Um, over there, um, I got a huge stack of boxes with some other random stuff, and then I may over there. Um, but I don't have any North Stars laying around here. Let's see what else is in this box. I saw Deafness throw a couple of these in an auction the other day, and people wanted them. The Home Run Challenge card, so I was thinking maybe I'd throw them in there. Acuna. I got some good ones. Shohei Itani. Gary Sanchez. George Springer. Oh, I know what this pile is. This is just kind of the random pile. See if anybody wants this stuff. Mascots. I don't really watch college football outside of scouting players for the NFL draft. Robert Parrish, 92-93 Fleer Ultra. I got some racing cards. You guys want to see? Some of these are pretty sweet. Some die-cut cards. Ricky Rudd and Jeff Gordon. Pretty sweet racing cards, really. Couple of them anyway. Uh, racing cards. Figure somebody might stop in and want to see something. Want, want hit on those. Give them away for, for cheap. Some old presidents. Uh, Chuck Daly coaching the. the see, are those scratch? Um, scratched. I don't. I don't know, buddy. Are those scratched? Yeah, I'm not sure what you mean, Joe. I'm sorry. There's some Scotty Pippen. There's not some bad stuff in there. Sean Kemp, Phil Jackson, Dominique Wilkins. That's a really nice Mark Price card. Actually, it's a Biography card, so it's got like a paragraph about him on the back. Second or third year, Jason Kidd. Pat Riley. Found a Captain America card. It's all super shiny. Threw that in the pile. Random golf card. Listen, I know I got some better stuff over here. Let me see what's up. Are they scratch? All oh, these things. No, they're not scratched. I've uh, they just been sitting over here, and I never bothered using them. Let's see here. Something in a penny sleep. Oh, die cast cards. All right. Let's see if I got any Vikings worth looking at. Nobody remembers Isaiah Standback. Isaiah Standback's parents don't want an Isaiah Standback autograph for <laughs> Uh, Trent Green. A few good years. Trent Edwards, a couple Trents. Oh man, dropping stuff. Some nice patch cards. This Antonio Holmes is real nice. Catch up with the chat here. Well, I think I work on Sunday. Yeah, man, it'd be awesome. To stop by and check it out. I just whatever I get, I'm gonna put back in the channel. I've had some surgery. Um a couple months ago, I guess now, and the bills are coming in, and um, yeah, so uh, not that I'm hurting or anything, I just don't have a lot to spend on cards right now. So, um, have this little auction, see if I can put some uh, the majority of that money back into the channel, uh, buy some boxes to open and stuff like that for you guys. I'd like to buy some boxes and start doing some uh. You, know, you guys buy into boxes or whatever, and we can all get good deals on cards. Pick your team or however. But, uh, yeah, I'd like to try some different stuff, see what you guys like. I love hanging out with you guys. It's a ton of fun. This time, Montgomery is so sweet. I just, it's not a guy I collect. Patch card. It's that real dark Packers green. Nelson Aguilar patch card picked up 
this is, uh, was this 18 or 19? 18, I think it says there. I'm getting older. My eyes ain't what they used to be. I got a little, uh, <laughs> my wife makes fun of me because I got a little magnifying glass over here when things get tough. This will be one of the better football cards in the, in the auction, this Marvin Harrison patch card. It's an upper deck. Are they scratched? That was such a simple question. I can't believe I couldn't figure that out. Sorry about that, Joe. <laughs> it's getting late. I'm on the East Coast. Yeah, that's a sweet card right there. I just I don't collect Marvin Harrison's. It's kind of a turd. Oh, what else is in this stack here? HP Blades. There's a Ben Roethlisberger number to 50. I know I got some Vikings around here somewhere. Give me a minute, and I'll find something worth looking at. Alex Smith, number to 165. Marcus Peters to 299. It's a nice, that's a beautiful Lawrence Timmons rookie. Super shiny, number to 999. And Emmett Smith rookie. It's not in great shape. That corner in particular, not great. This Jay Cutler rookie is sweet. It's super thick. I don't know if you can see it. Super shiny. Too bad it's Jay Cutler. You want to waste a half hour? Google up pictures of Jay Cutler smoking cigarettes. Some genius photoshopped Jay Cutler out on the field playing football with cigarettes hanging out of his mouth. And as stupid as it sounds, it is hilarious. Oh, that's a great idea, Joe. Yeah. I tell you what we do have a date for. I think it's going to be September 7th. We're having that 200. Hashtag we grow together, no doubt. Hashtag card crew. Um, on September 7th. <clears throat> get a drink of water. I'm sorry. <clears throat> September 7th, we're going to have the big uh, baseball epic uh mixer the epic baseball mixer i think i'll call it um we got over 200 packs we got dozens of blaster boxes we're gonna have what two three or two or three boom boxes to open um some high-end stuff we got some uh goodwin the goodwin box is going to be really cool uh, we got silver and gold packs from uh, the national i believe they were national packs um my buddy Luke's helping up out with that. A lot of this is going to be his stuff, stuff he's been saving up for months for this huge epic break. It's going to be September 7th, I think. Um, hey, Isaac. Hola. Thanks for stopping by, buddy. Email you. Oh, let me get my, uh, let me get my pen out. Yeah, so the auction's going to be fun when I set a date for that, but that mixer's going to be huge. It really, we we kind of timed it out based on what we've done and how quick we think we can move we're thinking it's probably going to be at least eight hours uh let's i'm going to write down your email real quick um it's funny joe because one of my friends, the guy that used to shop with me, he, he took a different job and he moved away, but his name was Joe and he was my iPhone guy. He was the guy that worked at Verizon. I'd go there. My iPhone guy was always named Joe and I think about him every time I see your name. September 7th going to be at a Twins game. It's all right. It'll be on video and that, and, and that break's going to be going for, he says we can get it in eight. I think it's going to take more like 11 or 12 hours to be honest with you. Um, there's a sweet Ted Ginn rookie card. How about a Bill Romanowski rookie? One of the dirtiest players ever. Reggie Bush rookie. Junior Seau rookie. That top corner's in, uh, a little jacked up, but it's not in bad shape. And then, uh, this will probably be a single lot, but this will be good for a Saints fan. The, uh, Marcus Colston rookie collection. His first Bowman. Or his Bowman rookie and his Bowman rookie Chrome, and then that one is a playoff with who's that from Panini? Uh, Don Russ. 
That was good looking. Pro set. Yeah, pro sets are trash, aren't they? It's not that they were trash. They just, I mean, they weren't great looking cards or anything. It's just the amount that they made. Like, you didn't protect your product at all in terms of making it hard to find or whatever. It's the same problem that Topps had in the late 80s over producing cards on a crazy level. Let's see. I know I probably got I got, I got a pile of Vikings in here. Let's see if I can find them. I had them separated by division. Shouldn't be too hard. Hold on a second. Where's the NFC? I got a crazy amount of Maguires and Casecos that are going to go in the in the auction. Where the hell are they? Come on. Oh, I got a ton of rookies. Yeah, just a ton of 2018-2019 rookies. Football that are going to be... Oh, here we go. Here should be... So there's the bear, uh, the bears. Damn it! Where'd some Vikings at? I'm sorry, guys. I can't even see if you're chatting. I'm looking over in this box. Hold on, give me a minute. What's this? Come here. Here we go. Yeah. I'll just grab this whole pile here. Oh, what do we got? Should be close. Lawrence Taylor. Ruben Drones. Where's those Vikings? Hard to find. Maybe I don't have much. Let me check on the chat. That's always, I do appreciate you guys hanging out. It's fun to, to chat it, chat you guys up. And here, here we go. Here's some Vikings. Let's blow right past them there. Eddie Lacy. Jeez. That Laquan Treadwell there is a gold border parallel or whatever. Score is calling them. Got the regular one in the. Oh man, I jacked up my camera, didn't I? Yeah, Treadwell, it's not looking great for him. That Robert Smith is pretty sweet. That's from the Legacy. The Legacy cards this year were beautiful. All hands team. That's the. You see the gold color through there? It, all the scores this year, I think, had the gold. We're kind of the that might be an insert. I'm not sure because I saw there's another all hands card. It was like Antonio Brown. It did. It didn't have shiny gold on it. Thielen's a beast. Sam Bradford. Dalvin Cook, man, he's got a ton of talent. I hope it works out for him. Kirk Cousins. Case Keesum, <laughs> Antoine Winfield from 05. This was uh, the Luminance this year. The Luminance were a real good looking car. That's uh, Kenny Galladay. Golden Tate. No, we're into the Lions here. Well, yeah, I guess I don't have a lot of Vikings. That Aqib Tlaib is really nice. What do you guys want to see? Football, baseball, particular teams? What do you think? And then I got here. Let me. 
if you look at that pile right there sitting on top of that wooden box that's got a bunch of stuff that i still need to go through in it i don't think there's anything great in there i think i've already skimmed those boxes for hall of famers and stuff but uh, i don't know there might i know there's like some old wrestling cards from the 80s and stuff in there that'll be kind of cool Let's see. What do I got worth looking at? What teams do you guys want to look at? I got them broken down by teams. What's uh, the athletics? There's some really good. This will be the newer stuff up top. But if you guys like uh, 91, I love these Master Blaster cards. They, they were sweet. I remember they had one of Eric Davis. My favorite player growing up. But, yeah, there are a ton of athletic, a bunch of Eckersley and Canseco's. I don't they, these might be hard to find. I, I don't see a lot of the classic baseball from 1990 laying around. They're in really good shape, too. Worst year ever, the 91 Fleer. I like the old scorecards. A lot of people weren't fond of that year. Post serial, you remember when post serial would put out cards? I thought somebody might like to have these old things. I don't really personally collect Jose Canseco. Man, again, it's such a shame that Upper Deck's not making football still. I figure somebody would be happy with the Canseco McGuire's. They're all Conseco's. Where's the McGuire's at? I love the old, um, that 1989 Fleers. It was the 91 Fleers. I remember when they first came out. And I just remember... Is so much yellow. Now, I'm not a big fan of the color yellow, so maybe that's a personal thing with me. But I, I really did never can. I, I, I think you might be right. There was something to do with that because Jabs does have a lot of influence. And, and he does a good job over there. Um, yeah, and he hates those. They were pretty bad. I don't know if they were the worst of all time, like everybody's saying. There, there's been some bad ones out there. What year is that? 87, maybe? 89. Getting back there a little bit. That's a That card right there is in perfect condition. 88. There's two of them. Some more of those P&G cards. I got a ton of these. P&G cards are pretty sweet. They're good-looking cards. Everybody's got a ton of the 91 done rounds. They made so many of those. You could buy them for like... 50 cents a pack or something back then when i was nine years old i got a paper route and from nine to eleven i worked as a, as a paper boy and i i had money league standouts those were good cards i got a wade boggs that i like a lot um so i had money when you know when i was that young and i love baseball so i spent all my paper boy money on baseball cards most of it anyway um and then when I was 11, I got a real job washing dishes at a restaurant for $4.25 an hour. It was amazing. I was 11. I had a real job. Um, and then, you know, that check would come in and I would just buy the hell out of some baseball cards. <laughs> so you end up with just a billion of certain years. candy store hook me up a box yeah yeah the place i would go to isaac um they would sell they had uh wouldn't get candy there normally but they had like ice cream sandwiches for 25 cents if you had a dollar 25 you could get two packs of baseball cards and an ice cream sandwich um that was, that was that size in Lachlan. <laughs> Lachlan, Ohio. Shout out to Lachlan, Ohio. Don't Google it. You'll be uh, 
unimpressed. At McGuire, it's a 96 Pinnacle. I, I really liked those cards. You remember the Dream Team card? Kaseko, black and white with the shirt off. It's a classic card. I put it in the auction. Maybe I should have kept that one. Mark McGuire from the... I love the 89s, man. It, I don't know. What do you guys think about the 89 Fleers? I like them. I like them a lot. I think it was 89. Yeah, 89. These Leaf cards, I got a bunch of 93 Leaf. And back then, most cards didn't do all the way to the border, or, you know, all the way to the edge. Most of them had borders. It was, well, the ones I saw anyway, it, it was fairly unique to me, the look of them, how they pushed all the way to the edge. Back then, it was a little more uncommon. The, eight, the 80, 90, I think it's a 90 Bowman, right? Yeah, the 1990 Bowman I liked. They were very simple. No bells and whistles. Sometimes I like just the standard looking card. Mike Piazza cards. Hot in 93. There's some Piazza in here. This was uh, this was a good looking card. I had a few players of these. Who was this? Tops Magazine fifty two reprint nineteen ninety one. The Tops Company. Ah, uh, look, see you. You see the edges are perforated. I would I would have ripped these. These would have came in the Tops Magazine. I would have bought it at the the stand. Show the back of the Bowman. Yeah, I'll show it. I'll show it. Give me just a second. Um, let's see. Hold on. So uh, you would see where I would have ripped. This would have came in a sheet of players, and I would have ripped this card across the bottom. And then you would have had your cards that would have came out of the magazine. You can still see there's still a perforated edge on that one. It never got ripped through. It would have been connected. There would have been a little sliver of paper between this card and the next card. So really what you would want to do is bend that and break it off. <laughs> uh, we were looking. Which one do you want to look at? Oh, that Bowman. Yeah, I like I like the Bowman. Yeah, they did. They did break down the stats in a bit of a funky way. See, that's giving you down the edge there. Team breakdown, and then it'll show you how he did, and then career totals at the end, the 90, 89 totals, and then the career totals on the right. Well, let's see if there's anything else worth looking at in the athletics. What is that? Ah, uh, Giambi. Giambi put up some stats, though, man. Harold Baines, a Hall of Famer now, I guess. 93 Donra. You remember the old Revco cards? Anybody old enough to remember the Revco cards? Ah, uh, Kyle Ripken, rookie. Excellent. Remember the greats? What's up, buddy? Ah, uh, what do we got? Any teams you guys want to look at? Football, baseball? What do I got laying around? I guess I could get, get out the, some of my personal collection. Start looking at I had sorted some of those out recently as I pulled up stuff aside for the auction. Throw a team or a player out there. Throw a player out there from the 80s or 90s. I probably got piles of them here. Some of the new rookie. Got a lot of new rookie cards. 
Oh, here's a card worth looking at. These old Star Quest cards. This is Ryan Braun. I got a lot of Ryan Braun in here. I don't like them. I don't collect them. This is Upper Deck Night. No, this is 2000 and what? A, yeah, 2008. If you're a Ryan Braun fan, I got other you know, Frank Thomas and stuff. These Star Quest cards. Pretty good looking cards. My personal collection. Um, that's a really good looking Ryan Braun too. Um, let's see, I gotta have some good stuff later. <laughs> it's steroids. The thing about Ryan Braun is like, okay, you're gonna do steroids and lie about it. That's fine. I, I get it, you know. Um, it's baseball, it's, you know, that kind of crap happens, unfortunately, in, in baseball these days, you know, but the problem I really have is you get caught, you lie about it, okay, but then you're going to try to get some poor guy, some regular Joe that works at the, the lab fired, you know, now, he was aggressively trying to get this guy fired, saying it was a mistake on his part and stuff. You know, just some probably, you know, some probably some intern that's reading the lab reports or whatever. <laughs> that's not cool. That's not cool. That was my real problem with Ryan Braun. You know, you said you want me to grab some of my TC. Did you guys see that Derwin James earlier? The Derwin James I got from Leaf. Oh, my God. I was excited about that one. Derwin James, rookie autograph, numbered, uh, what was it? 25. Oh, that's right. Aaron Rodgers said he was going to donate his whole salary if Ryan Braun was. Yeah, I remember he said something like that. <laughs> that's, that's funny. He did. He went to bat strong for him. It's a, it's a bad look. I bet Aaron Rodgers was pissed he made him look so bad. And Ryan Braun had talent. He would have he would have hung around the league for a little while. Let me step over here. Let me see. Uh, we'll grab a box of stuff to look at. All right, I got two big ass boxes over here. You want to see football or baseball? Football or baseball? I can't see the chat right now. Throw it in there and I'll, I'll drag these boxes over. Give me just a minute, guys. I right, run to the little boy's room for about 30 seconds, too. I'll be right back. Here I come, guys. Sit tight. I'm almost, almost there. I'm gonna make some room over here. Got cards scattered everywhere. It's a madhouse. Can't see the chat. Don't know if anybody's still here or not. Hold on.
Almost there. That's heavy. Getting old, I've had surgeries, way too many surgeries. I don't move as quick as I used to. I appreciate your patience, guys. All right, what's going on here? Show us the Sabos. You want to see some Sabos? I probably got some around. All right. So just in case you missed it earlier, I got some stuff in from the auctions. But I got um, this real quick before I get into some more baseball. I hit this as my first redemption ever. It was the ultimate draft uh, set from Leaf 2018. A black and gold parallel of Derwin James, number 9 of 25. The autograph is not great. Can't read it or anything, but that is a sweet card. I love Derwin James. Puckets? Yeah, let me see if I can get to the puckets. They're in the other box over there. I, this stuff here is keepers. Um, all right, I'm running out of room. Let me set these over here. And we'll grab a stack of it. What's in this pile? Let's see what's in. I think these are all. So these are the guys I'm sitting on. These are 2018, 2017, 18, 19 rookie cards that I just don't know what to do with yet. I thought about putting some of these in the auction. Lou, or I'm sorry, Lee Jin Chu Auto, Ford Proctor with Tampa Bay. These elite cards are beautiful. That's autograph number to 100. Uh, but these are essentially minor league players, so I won't know for a couple years whether or not these guys are good. Eric Cole, Kansas City, Austin Listy, and Philly. And then what do we got here? Jake Peavy. I kept that one because I like the line running through it. Jake Peavy was a good pitcher for a little while. Oh, I got a nice Larkin collection. I love me some Larkin. I worked at a Skyline Chili um, in Cincinnati um, down on Reading Road when I was a teenager. Howie Kendricks, Derek Lee. I got a couple of these Derek Lees. This one's numbered to 50 with a sweet pinstripe in it. Um. But Barry Larkin would come through that, come through the drive-thru and order cheese conies. So if you're outside of Cincinnati, it's a hot dog. It's a chili cheese hot dog. Um, that Derek Lee's got a sweet pinstripe too. But uh, yeah, so I can say I have, I've made uh, I've made lunch and dinner for Barry Larkin on many occasions. One time he came through, we had a, uh, it's like a 1990s commemorative baseball, this, like from when they won the World Series or something. It had their stenciled autographs on it. They weren't real autographs. Brian Giles was good for a year or two. Um, when I got him to sign one of those balls, I have it around here somewhere. When I was in the military, all my stuff ended up in storage for about 15 years. And I haven't got it all sorted out yet. This Austin Riley triple patch card is so wheat. Number to 399. I don't know. Uh, like I said, with these elite players, I don't know how it's going to pan out for them. Use the Diaz of the Dodgers. That's a real good looking card. Number to 50 or 49. This Brendan Rogers is sweet. I think I've showed this before. It's got the pinstripe, but then it's got like a pink batting glove or something. It's a real smooth texture. It's not like the other. Jersey texture. Diaz, using the LDS as an Oreo now. Prince Fielder framed. This is from uh, maybe 10 years old. 
a framed that's a piece of a bat it's a pretty sweet card gary sanchez game used memorabilia Oh, this Brian McCann is a sweet card. It's a pink parallel number to 50. Yeah, 43 of 50. Traded for Machado left. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I knew that. I'm sorry. I'm telling you, man. Uh, I've had lots of concussions, and the 90s were pretty wild. So uh, the old memory ain't what she used to be. I can tell you that. That's I love that McCann, the pink color number to fifty. And Jimmy Heron. These are all die cut numbered cards. That one's numbered to forty nine. I have a handful of those here. We'll won't spend too much time on them. Sixto Sanchez, Don John Duplantier numbered, Zach Hawk, Jason Jimenez, Oziel Rodriguez, Anthony Siegler. Those um all numbered cards, but the, a lot of them are from that Elite Extra. And if you ever find uh, a box or some packs of those for cheap, pick them up because they are beautiful cards. And, they, and they're the kind of sets where, you know, you're going to get a lot of rookies and you'll have to wait to see if they pan out. But, man, they are good-looking cards. Jake Arietta's numbered. Das Cameron. Swaggerty Jimmy Yaka bonus. This uh, Lausiga is beautiful. It's a rookie blue variant of the of the um, refractors, number to one fifty. Um, concussions. Um, so yeah, I got a few concussions in the army. Uh, no doubt about that. I got blown up one time uh, during a training accident. Um, that was a real good one. I broke, essentially, I, I tore, I tore a muscle, pinched a nerve and a uh, hairline fractured a vertebrae in a wrestling accident in high school when I was a wrestler. Um, that was a pretty nasty one. There's, there's been a few I've had, uh, had maybe seven or eight documented concussions and probably a handful of other ones that weren't documented. Now, I blame uh, the concussion that packs and the, these black parallels are numbered 67. They're pretty sweet. Um, the brown ones, gold ones are only numbered to like, yeah, 2019. Um, so I like to blame uh, my memory issues on the concussions and stuff. Uh, but the old lady says it's probably more due to the, uh, uh, the partying and stuff I was doing in the 90s. So I don't know who's right. Oh, here's a, we, we hit a nice patch here. Here's some really good rookie cards. Oh, thank, no, it was my pleasure. Um, some of the best people I ever met was in the, the United States Army. Some of the best times I ever had were in there. You know, we could talk about some of the worst times too, but, um, but no, some just wonderful people. It was a, it was a great experience. I was, I wasn't a great soldier, but, um, yeah, I did try to, um, I tried my best and uh, managed to be in for eight years. I guess it wasn't too bad. Uh, yeah, these Wander Franco. That's the 30th anniversary Super Shiny Bowman rookie. And then Wander's first Bowman and his first Bowman, Bowman Chrome. Wander Franco is going to be a very good ball player, obviously. Eloy, that is not a rookie. I got a couple of those. And that one's the Chrome version of it. That's a rookie, though. And the Refractor rookie, that's a beautiful card. Eloy, this Eloy is numbered to 2019. Yeah. What other? Let's see here. We saw Vlad earlier. I got a few. I got three of those left. This is my own. I've, I have not had a ton of luck finding Tatis Jr. this year. Um, I was happy to get this one. Let's 
And that one, that Chrome card is sweet. But yeah, I have not had a ton of luck with Franco or Tatis this year. I think those are my only two. And obviously, if you look at the channel, we've opened a ton of stuff in the past, uh, you know. We've only been up and running like three months, I think, four months, back to April. Uh, we started the day after my birthday, I think, April 26th. I'll be now the. the Atlanta's interesting. They're they got these kids locked up for some good contracts, some team friendly contracts, long contracts. Um, they're going to be really good. They got more kids coming behind um, Acuna and Ozzy as well. Watch out for the Braves, and if they're in your division right now, you better be scared because they're going to be good for a while. That Acuna Refractor, that's a reprint of his rookie, kind of an insert from this year. Top's fine. So I ended up with a lot of Acunas. I like to trade them for a few Tatis Juniors, probably. The uh, Diamond Kings, I think this was this year. Yeah, the Diamond Kings this year were beautiful. I like those a lot. Fall Creek cards. Thanks for stopping by, buddy. Yeah, um, there was a few years where I, I I didn't do much either, and it has taken me a little while to catch back up. Um, just watch, man. Watch the guys. Search up hashtag We Grow Together hashtag Card Crew. Watch those videos. Hang out with us. Uh, you'll get up and running in no time, man. Um, it's it's a lot about learning the new players and keeping up with the young kids. That's that's a nice rookie there. Rookie debut on my birthday, 2018. Um, and then you'll notice what I've noticed getting back into it is uh, it's it's all it's mostly about the autographs now. When you know, 10, 12 years ago, when I was collecting um, those relic cards and stuff first started happening, and they were huge. Now I guess the relics have taken a backseat to signatures a little bit, and a lot of um, not a lot of emphasis put on the, the numbered cards unless they're really, really low, numbered to 10 or 5 or 1 or something. Um, but what I found is it's difficult to keep up with is the amount of variance in each set. There are a lot of variants in every set, and they're not always easy to spot. Sometimes you actually have to, for example, on the top series one, if you look at that bottom number on a regular, where do I got one? On a regular top series one, um, if you look at the number on the bottom there, the very last number, if it doesn't end in like a two or something, then it's a short print. Um, but there, there's essentially, there's not a lot of ways to tell sometimes the picture is different or something but it's not like you always have the other picture of the other card right next to you um so that's been tough to keep up on you what i found what i've been doing is when i go to open a box um i'll google it up and i'll go to like uh, the uh, what's the cardboard connection or something there's a few websites that'll break down a list of each set so you kind of have an idea what to look for before you open your box or your pack. Um, that's been really helpful. Uh, Beckett's got, man, I got a lot of these. Oh, that one's opening day. See, like the opening days versus the regular. The only difference between the card is that opening day stamp right there and the trophy on the other side. Ah, here we go. I just pulled this one uh, last week, I think it was. Out of a, an optic blaster box. Ozzy Albee's pink parallel rated rookie. That's a beautiful card. Yeah, it, do a little research before you get into a set, especially if you're buying a box that's, you know, a $80 box, a $100 box. Um, you know, do a little research. Pull up the list. Um Try to see what those variants are you're looking for. Because like I said, they're, they're not always easy to spot these days. Some good Ozzy Albies and Acuna cards. Hit a lot of good cards for them this year. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me back this off. 
<coughs> I feel a little <coughs> cough coming on. Outside of the concussions, I got a little pleurisy where I got shot in the lung. <laughs> and that'll cause me to <coughs> have these mild coughing attacks. I guess like a little, <coughs> that little tickle you get in your throat, it kind of happens in my, a little lower in the chest. Sometimes a drink of water will stave it off. <coughs> Hard to uh, collect a player this year, remember the greats? Um, yeah, because there's going to be so many different cards. You you would be able to go out in 1989 and you say, okay, I got the I got the Fleer Jr., I got the Don Russ Jr., I got the Tops Jr., and you, four or five cards, and you got all the juniors, and you're happy about it. Maybe Post Serial would put something out weird you'd have to trade your buddy for, but um, – you're right. You back then you could put together the an entire year of a player in in a matter of you know less than ten cards. Now there's so many variants. There's so many autographs, numbered cards. It's it's crazy. It, it's it's impossible to get all the cards from a player. There's going to be one on ones out there and stuff. Here we go. Look at this Jeff McNeil. It's not numbered, but it's the red opening day parallel of his rookie card. And that dude's going to be good for a long time. Blown up shot. You got superpowers. <laughs> I've been shot, stabbed, blown up. Uh, those are the big three, I guess. Only one of those happened in the Army. <laughs> uh, I've been electrocuted real bad. I spent uh, four days on the heart monitor floor after I got electrocuted real bad one time. Um, that was pretty dicey. Uh, blown. I got hit by a car once. That was pretty rough that caused one of my worst concussions that's a green border parallel of the jeff mcneil rookie done real good with jeff mcneil this year too that's his uh refractor rookie no, it's just my word. <laughs> um i yeah the broken uh, neck or you know the the bad neck injury was pretty bad the, i blew two discs out of my lower back and had some surgery there i can't play drums like i used to i can't golf like i used to i was a professional drummer i, I was on tour with uh an old country guy named david allen co uh, just prior to my back surgery that's a, from a, the heritage collection this year um So, yeah, the surgeries, and then uh, what else? If I go through my list of broken bones, it's pretty impressive. I've broken both ankles, one of them twice. I've broken my left heel bone. You want to talk about a, 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 a uh, injury that lingers and hurts. I can still feel it to this day, and that happened when I was like eight or something. I can feel it in my bones. It's rough. What do I, what do I got here? I'm getting my stuff mixed up. I'm sorry. I'm talking talking too much um let's see shredded my left knee a couple different times no surgery though it, all, it always healed back up it still hurts real bad sometimes but yeah so many jeff mcneil rookies some pete alonzo's let's take this job yeah we did he wrote a lot of songs for a lot of people he wrote he wrote songs for um Kid Rock, if you know the song, um, I got two in there. I do got two in there. Um, if you know the song, um, Only God Knows Why, for example. So he's writing songs from the 70s all the way into the 2000s. Pretty impressive career. He had over a number, like 30 number one hits in the 70s, I think. Country drumming's pretty easy, but it was really fun being on stage with, uh, you know, a guy like that. Otani. Cup cards. That's a chrome variant there. Uh, Vegas do crazy. $400,000 for a trout rookie. Oh, my God. I don't. I couldn't. Man, I couldn't spend that amount of money on any card. Even if I was a billionaire. I'd have to look at my kids. I'd have to look at people on the street. Like, man, I could have used that money better. <laughs> I don't know. 
Bo Bichette, another one of those 30 anniversary and Casey Mize. Those are beautiful, beautiful inserts this year from Don Ra or Bowman. Let's see what other injuries? Some broken ribs. Uh, separated my left shoulder. Broke my left my left collarbone. The neck injury was pretty bad. That took a long time to recover. I was never the same wrestler after that. Reese Lightning. Rated rookie is the nickname rated rookie variant or something. That's a pretty sweet card. What else? Broke uh, my right wrist twice. Lots of broken fingers and knuckles, hand bones. Did a lot of fist fighting in my younger days. Kyle Tucker, uh, the Ricky Henderson. I got some. I got some good uh, Hall of Fame um, in the silver packs with the refractors this year. Sandberg, Henderson, Jeter, Kershaw, Posey. What else do we got in this stack over here? Oh, I'm running down memory lane of my old injuries. Make make them hurt. Make my my bones hurt. Some more refractors. Yes, a ton of these refractors. We got a we we had a whole case. It was I think it's the, it's the only real case break we've done. Most of them just boxes and blasters. But we did a full case of the top series one, and we ended up with a ton of those. Reggie Jackson. These optics are beautiful. I love optics. It's a good product. Ron Fig, what's up, buddy? Thanks for stopping by. Just looking at some of my personal collection, chatting about things. Ah, the Aaron. I like that. There's nothing fancy, just a little insert, but Standing on the moon or whatever, blasting balls into outer space. That's a pretty card. These pink parallels, you see that where it says cut? It's a nickname variant that Optic put out this year, and that one's the pink parallel version of it. It's a pretty good card. Chipper Jones, pink parallel. I got to keep these in order. I just got done... Uh, I think we all we got some good rookies coming up. Let's see what do we got here? Some random stuff. You see that? It was a big deal back in the day. The black line running through the J. It was con you know it's a error card or whatever. You show your buddy back in nineteen eighty or ninety. Yeah, I got the Jack Morris with the funky line through the J. <laughs> Here's a. This is a funny card. Is that John Smoltz? Or is that John Smoltz? John Smoltz? Young, fresh shave, freshly shaven, clean looking kid, and older, not clean shaven. Which one's John Smoltz? <laughs> Ian Happ, Pink Parallel, uh, Cody Bellinger, Topps Finest. This Topps Finest is a good-looking car. And we got a string of rookies, like a bunch of really good rookies coming up here. In just a second, Mike Trout, Tim Brain, why are they? All right, here we go. Before I start looking at these rookies, let me put some of these back in the box. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I appreciate you guys hanging out. I really do uh, enjoy talking to you guys and remembering the good old days, collecting cards. Pull 
put some of these away and we'll look at some rookies. Oh, shit. You had to learn about baseball players by reading books and yeah like if you would have to go to the corner store and buy like a Beckett book or something like there was no way to check values of cards you had no idea you would have to and and the good ones if you were going to get the good <coughs> if you were going to get the good book like the good Beckett book that had all the cards or whatever it was like 20 bucks or something a lot of money back then. <coughs> yeah, I didn't have internet till I was in my mid twenties. Um, it was around for then, I think. But uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, guys. I know that's annoying. <coughs> Give me a minute. Let me uh <coughs> step in here and see if I can do something about this real quick. I have a little medicine that'll help. Well, it's not going to make for a very compelling watch later, is it? Staring at a black background and listening to a guy call. <laughs> oh, better go smoke to clear that up. Huh? Uh, I do smoke, unfortunately, and with the uh, the old gunshot um, affecting my lung the way it did. Probably not the smartest idea. Um, but you know, there you go. A horrible habit. All right, let's see. You guys bear with me for like two minutes here. Take care of some business. And then we'll look at I got uh I got all kinds of great rookies to look at here in a minute. I told you about my memory already. I remember I remember Isaac is in Tijuana. Uh, Big D is in Minnesota. Where are you from? Where's everybody else from? I'm assuming we got some West Coast guys on here given what time it is. Oh man, that's incredible! Thanks, Big D. I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you before Sunday. I'm sure somewhere down the road in one of the uh, one of the streams or whatever somewhere. But I always appreciate you hanging out. You've been a great supporter of the channel, um, and I really, really do appreciate it. Missouri, you're in Missouri. I used to live in. Uh, well, live. I was stationed in Fort Leonard Wood um, for training. I was there about five months. Our training got. Uh, extended i guess you'd say we we're there a little bit longer than average so we yeah that, lived in fort leonard wood for about um five months i guess lost in the woods misery yes sir um in fall creek here in wisconsin i used to live i was also stationed in iowa um 
I lived in Davenport and the Quad Cities for a time, but I would have to travel north to Dubuque, Iowa, um, and where I was working with the nation or the naval station up there. <coughs> All right. Field of Dreams, or was? <laughs> Uh, no, it, it was after Field of Dreams. I never did go to Field of Dreams. I should have. Um, I lived there in 2003, 2004. Somewhere in that area, in the Quad Cities, and then up to Dubuque. Um, um, I remember... I remember one of the things that happened as far as the um, the um, <coughs> like I was an underrated state, but you mentioned like Field of Dreams, so like um, what do you call it? Landmarks. I remember one of the landmark stories when I was there was somebody was going around and burning down all the bridges in Madison County. And I think uh, the dude got like two or three of them. I can't remember. We were working. We were getting ready to um, deploy. We had to move. Um, we had to move 400 soldiers and a couple hundred vehicles. It was. We were working 20 hour days for several months in a row. It was pretty hardcore. So I didn't get a, a, to keep up with a lot out there. But I remember because there was a big movie called The Bridges of Madison County. And it had Clint Eastwood and stuff in it. And it was not a great movie. It was a sappy movie. But um, but I remember hearing on the news somebody had gone around and was trying to burn down the bridges of Madison County. So what a jerk thing to do. <coughs> Here, give me a, I got to blow my nose. Visit the little boys' room for about 30 seconds, and then we'll look at a bunch of nice rookies, and I'll tell you some things. Um, better movie filmed in Iowa? Ooh, tell me in a minute. I'll be right back. Give me 30 seconds. I'll tell you some other stuff from Iowa. All right, no more breaks for a while. Let's let's look at some cards and have some fun. Uh, what else did they film in Children of the Corn? Oh, I love that movie. I love the first couple of them. I love Stephen King, huge Stephen King fan. Sammy Sosha, upper deck rookie, in really good condition. It's off centered. It wouldn't be a nine or a ten, um, but it's in pretty good shape. I hate Sammy Sosha. I'm get rid of all the Sammys. You guys want to? You guys come to the auction. There's going to be plenty of Sammy Sochas in it. I promise you that. Some good looking cards too. I'm getting rid of all of them. Don't like Sammy, but I'm keeping his rookie because it's a rookie, and it's an upper deck. The OPG Bernie Williams rookie. How about that? Premier ninety two. He's white now. <laughs> uh, he is. He is. He took the Michael Jackson path and uh, looks a little lighter than before. Verlander. Uh, here's a sweet Mariano Rivera rookie. Strike Force Green. It was probably a parallel. It's an upper deck. That's a good looking car. Um, something I remember about Iowa. The, it's all flat. And there's not a lot of trees and stuff. Craig Biggio rookie in great shape. So the wind out there, I remember the wind, man. The wind never drops below like 15, 20 miles an hour, and I'm not even exaggerating. It was crazy. Like you try to cook out or something, and the wind just blows shit all over the place. Bernie Williams, that's a classic 1990. Who put out the classics? Was it Leaf, maybe? Yeah. 
Well, that's weird. There's nothing written on the back of this card. Some stats. It's got a spot for his autograph. There's no year. I can't remember who made the classic. Do you guys remember who made the classics? I got another one. We'll look, we'll look into it. Wind farms up there now? Yeah, they didn't have those when I was out there. Yeah, the wind, man. The wind was crazy. I remember I, I had never seen like a blizzard, like a true blizzard where the snow was coming in like sideways, you know. Um, Todd Helton, rookie. Well, we got Larry Walker's rookie. Look how angry. You're in the big leagues, dude. You're living the dream. Why are you so mad, Larry Walker? Um, what was I talking about? Um, oh man, I just totally lost it. Gary Sheffield's upper deck rookie with the Brewers. Classic was its own company. I was thinking that might be the case. I wasn't sure. For some reason, Leaf jumped into my head. I thought they might be associated with Leaf. Jeff Bagwell. I think. I think. Right around that time, 92, 93, is when the Gold Cup cards were no longer considered a rookie. Leafus Donruss, yeah. Let's see here. Uh, more Sammy Sosha. That one's got some imperfections. It's not a great shape. Jeff Bagwell. Triple play, Don Russ. I liked those. We got a few of those. I know OPG. I think OPG is the Canadian version of something. I don't know if it's Don Russ or, or something else. Yep, Jake Bowers, rookie. That's the top's finest rookie, too. The finest first. That's a beautiful car. I like the top's finest a lot. I liked Juan Gonzalez. That's a good looking rookie. I decided to keep that. I love the old upper deck. Craig Biggio, we already saw him. Another one. Maybe I should put, since I got doubles, maybe I'll put one in the... I'll go ahead and put one in the auction here. I think. Where should I put it? We'll stick it. We'll stick it up front. Oh, no, I just lost my space. Hold on a second. Where did Eric Davis go? Eric Davis was my placeholder. Oh, there's some good... Oh, there's some good rookies coming up. Let's take a look at some more here. TTM. Biggio, Biggio score rookie. That uh, Dion. He said the Jerry curl was dry. He said he always made it look wet, but it was actually dry. Another Dion rookie. I love Dion. Prime time. I remember when he came to Cincinnati, it was so exciting. Like, yeah, we got Neon Dion. Frank Thomas, that's a classic card. You guys probably got one. There's a lot of these around. It's kind of a staple. Mine's in bad shape. The corners are around it. Three of the four, anyway. A little off to the left. 60, 40, maybe even worse. Now, these were the score cards, but I don't think these were right. I think you could only get these at, like, Kmart or something. They don't have Kmart written on them, I don't think. Um, but I, these weren't the normal score cards. I think they were a little different, if I remember correctly. I'm 40 now, so uh, <laughs> it's been a long time, but I think I'm right on that. I think... If it wasn't Kmart, maybe no, because Hills had their own thing. They they had Hills cards you could get to, and Revco, I think Rite Aid or something put out crappy little cards. 
came with a book and a clamshell. So like a little little offshoot or something. My favorite player growing up was Eric Davis. And uh, before I packed it up, we're, we're talking about moving. We're starting to pack things up over right in front of us here where my entertainment center is behind this black box. Um, I had an Eric Davis signature. It's a picture. Uh, my mom met him, actually, and got him to sign it. Unfortunately, I didn't get to meet him. Uh, but she knows I loved him, so she took a picture and had him sign it. And it was awesome. Eric Davis, he's the only dude in Major League history that over the course of 162 games went 50-50, 50 home runs, 50 steals which is incredible. It wasn't in the same year, but it was 162 consecutive games. He had crazy injuries. He, he, um, I remember in the 90 world series, he lacerated a kidney diving for a ball. I think he had cancer later in his career. He, he ran across some awful things to deal with, uh, but he was one of the best, but maybe the most talented natural ball player I've ever seen. Eric Davis. He was incredible. Absolutely incredible. I'll tell you a quick story. Um, my stepdad, I was 10 years old, I think. And um, I forget who they were playing, but I remember Eric Davis came up to bat. There was a guy on second, and they were down by one. And it was late in the game. It wasn't bottom of the ninth, that kind of thing, but maybe the eighth inning or something. And... Um, um, I went into my stepdad's bedroom where he was watching the ball game. I was watching it in the living room and I said, I bet you five bucks. And I had a job. I went, yeah. So I had the five bucks. I said, I'll bet you five bucks. Eric Davis hits a home run at this at bat. And, you know, out of four or 500 at bats a year, you know, to pick the, the one he's going to hit a home run. But I remember, I swear to God, he hit a home run. And my dad laughed. He took my step. I call him my dad. He's my stepdad. But my dad laughed. He said, yeah, I'll take that bet. You're an idiot. You know, I'll take your five bucks and teach you a lesson, but I'll be damned if Eric Davis didn't hit a home run. And he had to pay me that five bucks. It was a crowning achievement for a 10 year old. That uh, Allen and Ginter, I love Allen and Ginter. It's a good-looking Tim Lincecum rookie card. How about a Benito Santiago? I loved Benito Santiago. I still do love Benito. Dude lasted for 25 years or some crazy stuff. You know how hard? You can imagine how hard catching is on your knees, up and down, up and down. For a catcher to get that kind of longevity out of his career is just incredible. It really is. Benito Santiago, undervalued player. There's no doubt about it. And Eric Davis thumbnail. Oh, I love Eric Davis. He was so good. It really was a shame to see his career go the way it did. That's a Giambi minor league card, the front rows. I got a couple good front row cards coming up. You're going to like two, probably. Another Lincecum rookie. That's an upper deck. Let me see. I can go down just a hair. I think that'll help. I can just leave them resting on that. So Lincecum. Well, we got John Smoltz rookie. He roided up. The, who roided up? Eric Davis? Or who do we just look at? Oh, Giambi. Yeah, Giambi was a crazy star. The Oakland man, you know, Canseco, and they still got a problem with it in Toronto. If you ask me, Jose Bautista, Edwin Encarnacion. But you can follow uh, Canseco around the league where he went in his career, Texas. And that, you know, that's, yeah, not hard to, not hard to trace that one down. That's a beautiful, I know his career, neither one of them worked out the, the way that they would have, but being here in Cincinnati, Edison Volquez and Jay Bruce, those aren't signatures. Those are just stenciled in or whatever, but um, Bruce's first year and Edison Volquez, that Chrome rookie I like a lot. Um, go back and look at Edison Volquez's changeup in the first, you know, throughout the prime of his career, he may have had the best changeup in the major leagues. It was a sick pitch, almost impossible to hit when he was on that pitch anyway.
Fall Creek, thanks for stopping by, buddy. I appreciate it. You have a good night. Remember the greats. You too, man. Thanks for hanging out so late. I appreciate it. Let's go through a few more Ryan Braun rookie. Here's a Bill Parsons rookie from 72. They used to put those old the huge trophies on them. Adam Wainwright, 1983, yeah, 83 Viola. You still here, Big D? Big D would like that card. Randy rookie, more Bernie. Well, I got quite a few Bernie Williams and Verlander rookies. Too many, probably. I like these rookies since they this Fleer. What year is that? 2007. They had the rookie sensations. They were good looking cards. Ryan Braun. Do I got two of those? I'll put the other one in the auction. I think I saw that card before. Oh, no, those are the ones that come, I think. All right, I got some good rookies coming up. Is there anybody left? There's a couple of people hanging out. One of them is probably my buddy Luke falling asleep. If I had to guess. I'm going to have to sort through these because some of these, like, I don't need all these Sosha rookies. I don't even like Sammy Sosha. That is not a rookie. There's something stuck together there. I thought I saw. Maybe I didn't. Somewhere I got those. Uh, I got some Jeter minor league cards. I thought I saw them coming up, but I guess not. That's a that's a good card. 1991 throwback, I guess. It was 500 strike out. Yeah. Ara I know I'm not pronouncing it right. I'm sorry. Aranya boys. Thanks for stopping by, buddy. We grow together. Hashtag card crew. Absolutely love the community. Thanks for hanging out, man. I do appreciate it. Let's, uh, let's see. Let's go through some more of these. What do we got over here? Getting into... I got... I ended up with a ton of those. Cal Ripken Jr. and Carlos Correa on the same card. I like those. That one's even better. Sandy Koufax and Clayton Kershaw. Just regular inserts. Nothing special about them, but they are pretty sweet cards. Don't know. Throwing Mookie Betts around. I like Gypsy Queen. Some people don't like them. Do you like Tipsy Queen? I do. 86 Eddie Murray. That's a that's a really good looking Eddie Murray card. I'm getting rid of a lot of Eddie Murray. There's going to be a lot of Eddie Murray in the auction coming up. It's an old Fleer 2004 classic clippings. I got a few players of those. So I like those cards too. Uh, heading into work at 4 a.m. Geez, I guess it is. I have to take a break here in about 16 minutes. Robin Yount, 87, Don Russ. I liked, uh, what year was that? Yeah, the 85 Don Russ with the blue border like that. The pinstripe black and blue border. Those were good looking cards. Joey Votto. Ah, there we go. The greatest pitcher of all time. If you disagree, you're wrong. Nobody could throw the baseball like Greg Maddox. Dude, is ridiculous. Faced over 20,000 batters. I've mentioned this on the channel, but it's a great stat. Faced over 
20,000 batters. And if you take away the time that he intentionally walked guys, he only went 3-0 and on batters, three balls, no strikes, 177 times. That is absurd. If you don't know about that, you know, how good that is, like, just take my word for it. That is stupid. That shouldn't happen. Why is there... What the hell happened here? <laughs> There's an Ivan Rodriguez behind it. I got to get them their own. Uh, I got to put those in regular. Know what the hell happened? How that happened? I rod it. So you got the greatest pitcher of all time and the second greatest catcher of all time, except Tony Gwynn. Oh, I love Tony Gwynn. Tony Gwynn. There's a few guys. You look at Ken Griffey Jr. swing. You look at Tony Gwynn's swing. Oh, they're perfect. Ted Williams, um, Wade Boggs, the way he hit a baseball, the control he had over over where to put the ball in play. Uh, Pete Rose during his prime, maybe not so much at the end, but these all PNG cards, I love them. Uh, I still got to sort these out. I got to get them sorted by player. The upper deck, what year is that? Those were gorgeous cards. Upper Deck 2005. I like those a lot. Tony Gwynn's your favorite? Yeah. Maddox, the thing about Maddox is, like, he would start off early in the game. I love the old Skybox cards, too. Uh, he would start off the game painting the corners, just nipping at the edge. And he would work the umpire pull holes. That's a beautiful card. He would work the umpire to the point where he would start getting calls, you know, by the end of the game, he's getting calls six inches off the plate just because he had conditioned the umpire to <laughs> that way. It was, he, it, I was a pitcher when I was younger. Now I'm a, uh, you know, five, seven after my back surgery, I'm, I was five, six and three quarters, my official military height. But after my back surgery, it went down to, uh, uh, five, six flat. So I was never a big guy. I was never destined to be a great pitcher, but, um, but I pitched, you know, in high school and, and little league and stuff. And I was pretty good, uh, for that range. Um, but it was, it was Roger Clemens and Greg Maddox. I, I, you know, if I had the, the power of, of Clemens and the control of Maddox, those were the two guys I always looked at. Then obviously, you know, Clemens would go on to just rip my heart out with the, the steroids and stuff. It was, it was a sad day in sports for me that day, I tell you. But uh, you want to see something good about Greg Maddox? Go to uh, – you can Google it up. He it was like 52 years old, and what – they had a major – I think it was like Chris Bryant. It was a really good ball player they brought out. And what they did uh, – Maddox was 52 – um, and they dressed him up in a disguise so you couldn't recognize him. They put a hat on him and a silly mustache. Um, that's just a reprint of the Trout Rookie. That's not a real one. It's the iconic card from 2019. Um, hell, what was I talking about? Damn. Lost my train of thought. Oh, the old medallion cards. What the hell was I just talking about? I was going to make a point about something. That George Brett's in damn near perfect condition. Buona Snoches. You have a good night, buddy. I appreciate you hanging out, Isaac. You're always a great supporter i do appreciate it um september 7th is going to be the massive you know like 10 12 hour break um make sure you you stay tuned for that and then um we got the the auction coming up i'll get that scheduled sometime soon too um but yeah man you have a good night you have a good day tomorrow i'll catch up with you soon what the hell was i talking about
Damn, I hate it when that happens. Talking about pitching and Maddox. I was going to make a point about something. How about Acuna Jr. and Mike Trout on the same card? That's pretty sweet. Uh, 87, oh, uh, 88, 89, yeah, 89, lots of Mike Smith. There's Tony Gwynn. We were talking about Tony Gwynn. Steve Carlton, that's a that's a neat card. You can't see it because it's in the plastic, but it's like a two layer card. It's kind of set down inside the border, like a picture frame or something. Hanley rookie. There's a Mark McGuire trophy. It's in good shape too. Not bad. That one. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not in great shape. It's off center too. Certified Select 95 checklist. Look at the back coming through the plane. Nice and level. Jeff Bagwell, the Masters card. It has uh, it still has the little thing that you're supposed to peel off. I never did. Those were good looking cards. I got the Piazza one too. Best offensive catcher of all time. Somewhere in the top five, I got, I got, what do I got? I got bench one, obviously. I got Ivan Rodriguez, number two. And then there's a, you can, you can make a case for number three for a lot of dudes. Yogi Berra, Carlton Fisk, Mike Piazza. That's a Topps gold label. Those are beautiful cards. What year is that? Can't read it. Too small. 99, I think. Something like that. We were talking about Wade Boggs a little bit, too. There's a gold label, Wade Boggs. Beautiful card, unfortunately, it's with the double race. Hey, here. Junior hits a home run for children's dental health. That's good. We all love the kids. Got to have healthy teeth. Ken Griffey Jr. Busting your house with a baseball bat. Make sure you're brushing your teeth at night. Brush your teeth, kids. That's a beautiful card. You get the black diamond. Beautiful cards. But again, it's the devil race. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Bring it down a little bit so you can see. Yeah, bench is number one. I I had a guy try to tell me at work. This is This is my boss at work. And he's a good guy. I like my boss at work. He subscribes to the channel. <laughs> but uh, he tried to com he he tried to tell me that Yadier Molina was a better catcher than Johnny Bench, and and uh, I I just wanted to verbally berate him out loud in front of everyone, but I didn't. It's an absurd statement. Nobody can make an argument that Johnny Bench is not. Ah, who asked for a Sabo earlier? How about a Dream Team Kmart card? They're probably gone. It thinned out a little bit. I forget who it was. But everybody likes a Chris Sabo card. And how about a Kmart exclusive? More Craig Biggio? Man, I got I got to sort these out. I got too many doubles in here. 86 Ricky in decent shape. Actually, the centering on that's pretty good considering some man laying over here. Where do I got those? I kept them because they were so bad. Somewhere I got these um, 86 ones where across the top you could see the other player's name like on the sheet. So there'd have been a sheet of cards and they cut them, you know, and they were cut so bad that you can see the other player's names run across the top of the card. It was they're really, really bad. I'll have to show them to you sometime. It was just kind of funny how god-awful some of the quality control was for these guys in the 80s. I'm having a blast talking. The goon with the goggles. Um, 
Yeah, Yadier is a good player. Uh, definitely a good player. Um, and I'll, I'll listen to a guy who wants to argue that he's top 10. Um, you know, I'm willing to listen to that at least, but I ain't willing to listen to him being a, you know, anywhere near Johnny Bench. That's just crazy. That's crazy talk, man. <clears throat> All right, let's pull out some other stuff here. See what we got. See if we got anything good. Let me put this little stack back here. It's a ton of fun for me. I, I love sitting here and, and chatting with you guys. It's it's a lot of fun. There's enough cards to keep us busy for a while, too. We can get a couple of these in, probably. Roger Clemens, 88. Let's see. We'll put that right about there. How about a Bo Jackson, 1990? I think that's the 90, right? Yeah, that'll be the 90. A couple Bo Jackson, 1990 Bowman. 89 Fleer, 88 Don Russ. I like the 88 Donis color scheme with the border. Not quite centered perfectly, but that's a pretty good card. Pretty good condition. Talk about Johnny Bench and he shall appear. You can do it at home. Go in your bathroom, turn off the lights, say Johnny Bench three times, spin in a circle. You know, show up and smack you in the face with a baseball bat. True story. You know, you ever seen the picture? His hands. You ever seen the picture of him holding? Dude could hold like six baseballs at one time. It's ridiculous. Cal Ripken Jr. Select 95. That's a pretty card. Honus Wagner, Tops Heritage, what year would that be? Probably, I can't read it, too small. How about the Spaceman, Bill Lee? You want to entertain yourself for a half hour? Google Spaceman, Bill Lee. What year is that in his career? Oh, this, he was a rookie back in, woo, 69. That's in 1982. Bruce Sutter, more Bruce Sutter, 1983 tops. There we go. And this, these next two cards are in pretty good condition for their age. We're talking about 1971. Jim Bunning. And the 1971 Jim Catfish Hunter. Pretty good condition. The black bordered cards, I mean, they get beat up pretty quickly and then the imperfections shine through. So that's really not bad for those. So the Acuna Jr. snuck in with some of the vintage stuff. Oh, I just got these the other night. My buddy uh, got some extras he gave me. This is from the National Baseball Card Day set that Aaron Judge. That's a pretty sweet card. That'll be hard to find. And one more time. The greatest pitcher of ever. Of ever. Well, that's just one little uh, one little stack here. We got plenty more. We could do this another time. I know it's getting late. The crowd's thinning out. Is anybody still here? Still with me? Aranya? Oh, I got to get these in. Uh, see, where's those penny sleeve guys? I got I got work to do. I got to get this stuff organized. What is it? It's probably almost 5 o'clock in the morning. We, uh, it's 4.20. We've been going about two hours. So I guess that's a good time to call it. Um, judge all rise. Ariana... Aranya, I appreciate you hanging out. Um, we're going to call it there, I think. I'll do this anytime. You catch me in uh, one of the other guys' um, streams or whatever, and, and you want to hang out at night, just uh, just ask. I'll, I'll turn the old webcam on and start sorting through some old cards. It's a lot of fun for me. 
Um, thanks for everybody who hung out tonight. We got uh, eight likes in this video here already. Um, so yeah, I appreciate it. I have a ton of fun. I got leave this video up um, just for fun, I guess. It's a little slow paced, a uh, little bit of aggravating uh, pauses in between in the middle. I'm dragging on at the end here. Um, so maybe not the best video on the on the channel, but a fun time nonetheless. And uh, my appreciation, I tell you, it's it's sincere, it's heartfelt, and I hope you feel it. Um, it. It's a lot of fun to do. I hope to keep doing it. I hope you guys keep hanging out. So thank you one more time. It's 420. We're going to get out of here and shut down the night right once again. Thanks for hanging out. September 7th, it's the big box break, um, the epic break. It's going to be an 8 to 12 hour kind of deal. It's going to be insane. Stay tuned for the auction. I'll announce the date on that sometime soon. Preston underscore sports on Twitter. We'll post there before we go live, so stay updated over there. Thanks to Aranya boys and Isaac and Big D and everybody else that hung out tonight. It was a good time. I do appreciate it. Be good. Have fun, and I'll see you next time.